Hello, we are the Cardi Boys, and we are presenting the Cardi Club, which is a Mario Kart 64 analytics suite. And our customer is Dan Ryan with Bite Light. So what is it? It's a, a suite that captures events that happen throughout the game. And it generates all this information and sends it to a database on the back end so that we can query it later so that we can find out information that is about what has happened throughout the races. And this is implemented as a website that, so that you can communicate with it. So you might be asking yourself when you've seen all the other very cool projects today, why is this important? Well, <laughs> believe it or not, um, it is in fact important to our customer because it breathes new life into retro gaming. Um, it provides a kind of atmosphere like Xbox Live or the PlayStation 1 uh, network that you can have some sort of leaderboard so that you can actually compete with your friends and save your scores and <laughs> have that bragging right over them. Um, and it allows you to improve your racing skills so that you can go back and look at old races and see what you did wrong and see what is actually, if hitting a shortcut on one of the tracks is actually worth it in the long run or if the five attempts that it took you to get into it wasn't uh, worth the time. Um, or in it actually being able to investigate the specific game mechanics like seeing if rubber banding is actually a thing in video games, if they give you better items when you're farther back in order to let you catch up. So the current state of our project is it has reached its fully realized final state. Um, we can actually go through the full process of uploading a session video which is comprised of multiple different races, um, have these submit jobs and be processed as individual races. All that information gets sent back to our database. You can later watch videos of races that you've uploaded as well as query the actual database about all the information. So as a very brief technical overview, we have four main components to our product. Um, this is the audio processing, which is meant to detect key phrases in a microphone input um, that our user specified. Uh, he wants to be able to tag specific moments in the file himself by saying the phrase tag it, and so we had to be able to recognize that phrase. Um, we have video processing, which is actually detecting events during the races themselves throughout um, masks being placed on the videos. Uh, we have the database and query language, which is used to access the information, obviously, and the website, which is the interface for all of this. And these are just many of the companies that we used, many of the products. Uh, my name is Mark O'Brien, and I took on the roles of hardware and audio processing for the project. Now, uh, the hardware has basically two components, the first being a composite video capture card to get our video feed from the gameplay and the second being a microphone to capture the external audio of the things you're saying while you're playing the race. Now for the audio processing side, we have two general detections that we want to do, which is the first would be uh, when a general exciting moment happened, and the idea behind that is exciting moments will happen when you're making the most noise. So uh, that is one detection that takes place, and the second would be the key phrase detector, which uh, we have used the Google's uh, or Google Speech unofficial API to uh, outsource our speech recognition processing to and handle the results that they give us. Uh, hey there, I'm Josh Navon. Uh, my main role in this project was to develop each individual detector. Um, so the first thing that goes into developing a detector is actually acquiring the mask for detection. Uh, and that mask is taken from a video frame where its corresponding sprite is present. Uh, in this case, it's the lightning bolt for the item detector. And then that mask is compared against uh, uploaded video for event detection. Um, another large portion of my work has gone into developing custom processing for a handful of detectors. And that includes implementing binary thresholding, uh, Gaussian blurring to decrease noise in the image, as well as in-range thresholding uh, for specific colors. And in this case, for the position detector, we threshold it for yellow and orange. And then the last uh, thing that I did for this project was develop extensive handling for event detection. So that includes applying uh, multiple heuristics for the actual event detection, uh, one of which being time debouncing for event hits. Uh, so that an event isn't created more than it should be, um, and also the event creation itself. Hey everyone, my name is Johan, and uh, during the project my main focus was on video processing and getting that integrated with all the other components that we have. 
Uh, so what did I do? Well, I designed the overall processing architecture that we use. Uh, so in the beginning, Josh and I worked pretty closely to develop all, all the core functionality that we need to detect uh, events and items and all that, as shown by the orange in that little nucleus. Uh, I also later on focused on ensuring that the video processing that we do is actually being done in parallel rather than just serially. Uh, so what this means is that we, for every race that we get, we take the player and we assign a detection thread to that instead of uh, detecting events for every single player in one single thread of execution. Uh, after that, I focused on web integration, uh, specifically dispatching specific jobs for splitting up a session into races, processing races for events, and processing races for audio events, uh, as well as making sure that these events get sent to the database correctly. And that can be highlighted by the blue shell around there. And finally, uh, I developed a script around the Google Speech Recognition API in order to detect the key phrases that uh, Mark described. And the way this works is you feed it a file, it sends it to Google and Google and does all the processing, sends back an object, and we check the object if watch this or tag it is in it, and in that case we put that as an event as well. Hi, my name is Michael Gobet, and I took on the role of sort of the data and cloud wrangler. Um, my, first, my first role was to develop sort of a database schema that would be able to store all the different types of events that um, Josh and Johan are detecting, um, and then to develop an API around the database so that the other portions of the project were kind of shielded from directly accessing the database. Um, after that, I developed a query language so that you could take advantage of the schema um, and ask pretty much arbitrary questions about the data that we collected. Um, and that basically parses uh, the query language that, we, that I designed and generates SQL that will actually run on the database for that. Um, and then I also focused on sort of the overall system design and integration with Amazon Web Services, um, including how do we map uh, like the video processing onto uh, the VMs that run on Amazon, and how do we run the website, and how do we notify the processing VMs of what their new work is, um, and I've got all that worked out um, and sort of got all that integrated together. So my name is Jonathan, and I was the interface beautifier. I designed the actual web interface that we have to access the application, and the included pages are home with the login information and um, be able to create a user there as well. Um, query, watch, upload, and obviously log out for when you're leaving that computer. Um, so it hooks up into the back end just with a little bit of logic. Um, we were using Django for all of the processing to be done in the back end. This is a video. Wait, button should be up in the corner. Not really. So in conclusion, we have a working system overall. Um, we found out that both video and audio processing are very difficult for many different reasons that we could go into, but I believe that we're running low on time. Um, and looking forward, we would like to integrate a little bit better of speech recognition to be able to recognize more uh, full featured phrases. Um, faster video processing, because we're currently doing it in seven times the length of the race video, even though that we're splitting it up into so many different threads. Um, and a slightly more user-friendly query interface because you currently need to uh, know the database scheme on the back end to ask it questions. But we have that all laid out for our client. And any questions? Go for it. <laughs> Please. <laughs> We 
we have a capture device that um, takes it from directly from the output. We have a splitter. Yeah, that goes into Split the video. yeah. It goes directly into VLC, and then we capture it and then upload it from there. <laughs> um, to be honest, the first time that we met with them, it was we just went through like a huge list of all the different things that we were curious about the game, and it was um, mostly just came down to shortcuts and item usage. And one of the really cool statistics that we wanted to be able to keep track of was the amount of times a certain player hit another player, so that you could say who had the best accuracy with green shells, for example. That's not a targeted item. That if you are like directly behind a person when you use it. It's a very strategic moment, or like best banana usage from slightly ahead. There's, um, we're able to find out who used what items, but we don't have collisions because that was a difficult. So that's one of the things that we're working on. For. Really quick. The reason we couldn't do collisions was because the masks were either featureless or not feature rich, or uh, they were tainted by the background because they were translucent. So that kind of made detection unfeasible. <laughs> um, they unfortunately weren't able to be here today, but uh, we're, we will be delivering the product to them soon, so um, we will find out. <laughs> no, so. Yes, yes. Um, through <laughs> at least the process of testing it, we have definitely gotten better. I know a lot about Mario Kart right now. <laughs> yes, that's definitely true. <clears throat> Any other questions? Yes. You know, far too little. Yes. Um, there was a lot of work to be done, but a good portion was definitely Planet Spain. Planet Spain. How, so this is obviously great for Mario Kart, but how expandable is the So, Johan actually made the uh, generic detector class, and all it really does is uh, blurs the image. We specify a pseudo region of interest so that it can scale the mask accordingly to the video size and then it just feeds it through the OpenCV template match function <coughs> so, um, so as long as you can get the or as long as you can get accurate masks for whatever game that you're trying to detect events in it should be pretty easily portable and it doesn't even hypothetically have to be a game it can be anything that you're trying to detect as long as it's um, statically in the same place every time that you're trying to detect it and it's the same mask go for it Thank you. Thank you.